Hi, I'm Bob Henry, Product Manager for Epilogue Laser. With 30 plus years of laser system innovation, we're happy to introduce the next generation in laser productivity. Today, we're gonna to work with our new Fusion Pro laser systems and our updated Epilogue software suite. Laser engraving and cutting technology is an invaluable tool for manufacturers, designers, engineers, creatives, students, just about anybody who needs marking, engraving, or cutting capabilities. As this technology becomes more accessible, Epilogue is committed to incorporating advanced features and functionality that allow users to get the most from this incredibly versatile equipment. We're gonna focus on the advanced features of the Fusion Pro Laser System, engraving speeds up to 165 inches per second, our new Iris camera positioning system, laser system touchscreen display, new and innovative cutting table options, and the safeguard features of the Fusion Pro machines. Thanks again for joining us. With that, let's get started. Our new Fusion Pro laser systems are available in two different sizes. We have a 32 inch by 20 inch work area and also a 48 inch by 36 inch. Today, we're gonna to work with our Fusion Pro 48 machine. Again, 48 inch by 36 inch work area. We're gonna start with a little tour inside the laser system. We have some really unique features that we integrated to this laser system. First, I'll note that we have um, a large glass door here uh, all of our laser systems that we manufacture here at Epilogue are class two laser systems, meaning that they're very safe. If you were to open one of these two doors, either the overhead door or this front access panel door, the laser beam would shut off. So again, we build all of our laser systems for class two specifications, so they're very safe. Inside the laser system, we have some really unique cutting tables and task plates, we call them. Uh, this is what we call a slat table. This is really useful for large cutting applications where the pieces are going to be quite large. Sign industry uh, people will really like this type of application. We also have kind of our standard vector grid setup. Uh, these are interchangeable. These can be taken out and removed. Uh, you could move the slat table over to this side and also you can install our task plate. Both sides of the table can be removed and the parts are interchangeable. I'm gonna remove the slat table. Our task plate, this is what you would use for engraving applications. And of course the vector grid you see here and the slat table that we've just removed would be used for cutting applications. I'm also gonna show you our lens assembly setup here on the control panel of the laser. And we'll go through this in more detail later, but I'm going to jog the lens assembly a little bit closer to the front of the machine so we can have access to it and see it a little bit better. All of our Fusion Pro machines have a really unique manual focus gauge. Just flips down, raise the table until our material touches the gauge, move the gauge out of the way, and you're ready to go. You'll also notice that we've got our lens assembly set up here. Uh, this is in a cone style setup. This allows us to keep positive pressure over the lenses to keep them really clean during the operation of the laser. This can be removed and cleaned very easily as well. And you'll also notice that we've got an autofocus plunger here. Uh, this is for if you wanted to do autofocusing on a particular job, you can run the lens assembly where you want it to go and then hit autofocus on the display panel and it will autofocus to the material height. Also notice that the lens assembly we have a lever here. This allows for all of the air to go through the cone if we modulate it towards the right. And then if we open it up all the way, we have positive air pressure coming through the cone. And then we also have air coming out this back sweep type device. Uh, both of these are quite good for keeping the surface of the engraving or cutting clean, uh, ensuring that we get a good cut and also providing protection for the optics inside the cone assembly. Included with all of our Fusion Pro systems, including the Fusion Pro 48 and the Fusion Pro 32, is our new Iris camera system. We're really excited about this, and we're gonna show you in a little bit more detail later in the demonstration how this works. But you'll notice on the lid, the inside lid of the laser system, we have two cameras mounted here. Um, on the Fusion Pro 48, we have two cameras. And then because it's a smaller size than the Fusion Pro 32, we have one camera mounted center line on the table. The cameras give us live feedback on the work surface, back to our software suite where you can position artwork, locate, manipulate, change graphics as you go. Uh, so again, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later. 
but yeah, all of our laser systems have this now equipped, uh, delivered with all systems. Another new feature in our Fusion Pro models is our safeguard technology. That includes the positive pressure in the lens assembly here. Also, the belt uh, on the x-axis is designed very tight within the gantry to uh, prohibit or eliminate the migration of contaminants and smoke up into the bearing assembly that's located inside the gantry. In addition, we have a bellows system over here on the right and the left side of the gantry that will keep contaminants, smoke, particulates, vapors from migrating outside of the gantry space where it's really efficiently removed to an outside location. With our iris camera technology, we have the overhead cameras that are looking down on the workspace, but we also have the integrated lens assembly mounted camera. Uh, this is used for print to cut applications where material is printed with registration marks. The overhead cameras find the general location of those registration marks. And then this lens mount camera will find the precise location and cut the shape exact to the graphic. Again, this is included on all laser systems. On the exterior of the laser system, we have the control panel. You'll notice that we've got a, a keyed power switch here. This is really handy for customers that want to turn the machine off overnight and then remove the key for safety reasons. We also have a, a light switch for internal lighting within the laser system cabinet. You'll notice that it's just a simple toggle. We can turn the lights on, turn them off. Such a big window in this, we get a lot of ambient light coming in, but the LED lighting that we have inside the machine really does help to eliminate the product that you're working with. We also have an emergency stop button. And then we've got a seven inch LCD display here. Uh, this is a really nice feature. Uh, it gives us a lot of control over the laser system. You'll notice that we have a number of different jobs that are loaded into the laser system right now. The job name is related to the job name that we get it in the, give it in the software before we send it over. So the clothes hanger is one of the jobs. If I wanna run one of those jobs, I simply press on it. If I wanna look at the laser parameters that we're applying for that job, if I press and hold, this displays the speed, the power, and the frequency that we're going to use with that job as well. Go back to the list. You can see that we can select any one of these items and then simply hit the go button to start that job. Also here, we have the settings. Uh, this allows us to have a lot of control over the laser system. Uh, all of these things are set at the factory, but some of our customers will want to find a little bit more fine tunability with the laser system. They can do it in this function. We also have uh, network capability here. This allows us to set the IP address for the machine. And note that we have a lot of customers that have many laser systems with uh, network connectivity with an Epilog laser. You can have a fleet of laser systems working from one computer, really handy feature. And of course, all of our systems, including the Fusion Pro, you can print through a USB connection as well. So back to our jobs list here, uh, I'm gonna go through some of these functions. This button here you'll notice is the focus button. This allows you to raise and lower the table. That's done through a simple joystick movement. And you'll see that we get a readout here we can also specify that we want the table to move to a certain distance. We've got a keypad that pops up. If you know that your material is 0.5 inches in thickness, you can simply key that in. Really handy feature. This button is the red dot pointer. This allows the, the red dot pointer to turn on in the machine. It's a great tool for positioning or relocating. Uh, identifying locations where you want to do marking on the work surface. This joystick control gives us the ability to move the lens assembly around within the laser system. So if we wanted to set a new home position, if we wanted to uh, set up something that uh, is not up in the left corner, we can simply move this around. This is also handy for moving the gantry to the front of the machine for access, easier access inside the laser system. You'll also notice here that we have an autofocus button. If I've placed material on the table, I run the gantry over the top of that material and I want to use the autofocus plunger that we talked about earlier. I simply press autofocus here. The table and material are gonna come up, engage the autofocus plunger, and then the, the table's gonna lower to the predetermined correct height for the engraving and then the work will start. We'll go over that in a little bit more detail. Uh, but yeah, very, very complex, uh, very sophisticated control panel here, uh, very feature rich. A lot of our customers will find 
They like the functionality in here. Uh, some will use very, pretty much just the basic stuff, but yeah, we offer a lot for our customers to use in here. Let's now spend a little bit of time at the Fusion Pro software suite. Bear in mind that this software works with all of our laser systems, but with the Fusion Pro, we have the added benefit of the cameras that are looking down on the marking field. With this view, you can see that we've got a, the, the camera installed. We've got uh, our parts, our materials that we're going to engrave. I'm gonna explain just a little bit what's going on here uh, in our software suite. Uh, I mentioned previously that you can run many lasers off of one computer. You can see here that we've got a variety of different laser machines hooked up to this one computer. So we can simply print to an IP address that we've established in the laser. Uh, we can give it a specific name if we wanna name this particular job and then save that later, we could come back to it, uh, open that up again. Uh, in here, uh, this is kind of the controls for the camera. Uh, we're in the edit function right now. With edit, this allows us to do a lot of different things. Our, our artwork is sitting over the bottle openers. You can see we have artwork already set up for these different openers. We've pre-cut a jig to hold the openers in place. Uh, so you can see the artwork there. Uh, here we can zoom in on it. Uh, really nice features here. We can ungroup this as well. That allows us to select just one of the items if we wanted to run one at a time. We can group all of them back together if we wanted to run all of them or if we wanted to run just a few of them. A really handy feature. These functions are typically done in software, uh, but we've migrated these functions over to our software suite, which gives our users a lot more functionality. Uh, so we'll group these all back together. We also have the ability to rotate the artwork. And we'll go to our rotate function here. So you can rotate it any direction that you want. Um, you can also specify a degree of rotation here. You could make it 90 degrees. Uh, you could rotate it back to zero if you wanted to. So again, a lot of functionality in this software that we've developed. You can also scale X and Y, uh, also stretch and manipulate the size of the artwork as well. Again, functions that are typically done in software, but we've uh, enabled them in our software suite. So here, I'm just gonna move the artwork back onto the location where we're gonna do the marking. You can see the cameras looking down onto the workspace. Uh, let me grab those. and and then we can move them back up onto the marking field. So the cameras allows, allow us to really fine tune the location of where the engraving or cutting is gonna go. A live video feed uh, to the software suite here is a really handy feature. So once we've got all of the artwork set up, uh, we go then over to this function. Uh, you'll notice that we have uh, everything listed here, uh, engraving, cutting, if we, if we had Cutting applications in here, we could simply do vector. You'll notice that we see nothing here now because there's no vector graphics in this file. The graphic here goes away as well. If we set this back to engrave, uh, then you'll notice the graphic comes back and the machine will be set up to engrave. Here we can set different resolutions for the work. Uh, this is scalable. You can select any resolution that you want. Typically you'll find resolution values are set at common numbers like 300, 400, 600, 1200. But with the Fusion Pro machines, we can specify if we wanted 335 DPI resolution, we can do that as well. For most engraving applications, you're gonna be around four, five or 600 DPI. Uh, we find with the image quality generating from the Fusion Pro machines that 500 DPI is a really good number. If you go a little bit lower resolution, you might lose a little bit of uh, quality in the engraving if you're down around 200, 300 DPI. So for uh, typical engraving applications, you might be running around 400 DPI, 500 DPI. Uh, speed is um, at 100% here. This is a leather product that we're going to be engraving on. So this will be a high speed, relatively lower power application. So we've got the power set to 35. And again, this is scalable here. You can use the slider bar to move this around. You can also type in a specific number here as well. We offer different, different dithering type of patterns. Uh, these produce slightly different results. It takes a, a fine tuned eye and a trained user to really notice the difference. We're just gonna use standard dithering here. We're gonna do one cycle. If we specified three cycles, the job would run and then repeat again two times. So for this, we're just gonna run one cycle. Thickness and offset allow us to program the table movement. If we've got an item that is one half inch in thickness, 
we can simply specify the thickness of that uh, by toggling on with autofocus. We'll turn this on. And then we can specify a thickness that we want for that value. So 0.5, the table will automatically go to that distance and the engraving will start. Really handy feature. You don't need to do a manual focus function or autofocus at the machine. Uh, so we're gonna run this job with autofocus off for now. And so we'll turn this off. Offset is typically used with our fiber lasers where we want to set a different focal distance to achieve a different type of mark on the surface of a metal or plastic material. Offset allows us to focus to the height of the material and then offset a specified distance uh, to achieve a different type of mark. Registration, uh, this is the onboard camera that's mounted to the lens assembly. Uh, this is what we use to locate those individual registration marks on the paper or acrylic or other product that we're going to be cutting. Uh, we're not going to demonstrate that today. Uh, the direction is top to bottom or bottom to top. We're going to run this job with uh, running the laser from the bottom of the field and then back up. So with this, we're ready to go. Um, simply go down here to the print function, click on print, and the job is sent over to the laser. With our jig and the materials in place, let's go to the control panel on the laser. You'll notice that we have our jobs listed here. The bottle opener job is the one that we just sent over. You can select whichever job you wanna run. In this case, we're gonna do the bottle opener. If I wanna verify the speed and power resolution that I'm running, I can simply press and hold on the control panel and that'll show me the speed, the power, and the resolution that we're running for this job. At this point, I'm ready to run and we're gonna press the go button on the control panel of the laser and the engraving will start. This next project is gonna be a lot of fun. We've got a great graphic here that we're going to engrave onto the body of a guitar. We've got the graphic set up on an eight and a half by 11 page. We can print this over. Uh, we've got our graphics or our, our guitar body set up on the bed of the laser. We just click on the print button and then print here. And we go to our software suite. You see, we got the feedback uh, from the cameras here. You notice our graphic up in the left. You also notice this area is kind of grayed out. That's because our page size corresponds to this space. We need that page size to incorporate the whole guitar body. So we can just simply grab those grid lines and move them out of the way. This allows for this entire space to be our now printable area. So I'm gonna grab the graphic and bring it down here. Uh, one thing you'll notice uh, is that uh, we've focused with the camera onto the table. Uh, we need to focus on this space because this is probably an inch and a half in height. When we do that, you're gonna find that we're gonna see uh, basically a double image of the table. That's perfectly normal. Uh, we're gonna wanna focus on this space and then we'll set up our graphic in here. So we're gonna adjust the table focus to uh, the precise location of the uh, guitar body. And you'll notice we're starting to get a little bit of separation here. There's our gantry coming over with a live video feed. We do the autofocus sequence, focus on the guitar body. And when that's done, we move the gantry out of the way. And now we can zoom in on this space and manipulate our graphic because we know we're in the right focal plane. So I'm going to ungroup these items. I'm going to grab this one and group it individually. And then I can grab this one as well. I'm going to group that one and I'm going to move this out of the way just for a minute. And then I'm going to place the skull down here and I want to get the curve of that skull kind of equal to the curve of the guitar body. With this object, I want to rotate it by 90 degrees so we can fit it in that space a little bit better. And then I can just simply move this over here, get it set where I want. That all looks pretty good. I do see that I've got a little bit of graphic hanging off the edge here. So I'm gonna move this over a little bit more and then move the skull over as well. So we get everything on the guitar body. At this point, we wanna set up our laser parameters. So we go back over to the engraving process. Uh, we're gonna run this job at a little bit higher resolution to give us a little more depth into the wood, a little more detail. So let's set this one at 555 DPI. Uh, we're gonna run this at about 65 speed and 100 power. That should give us a real nice deep engraving into the wood uh, and give us really good detail on that engraving as well. And then again, I'm gonna have the engraving direction go from the bottom of the piece to the top.
From here, we're ready to go. I simply click on the print button and the job gets sent over to the laser. With our next job, we're gonna do some engraving on some wood cutting boards. We've got the graphic already set up. We're using individual names. We're gonna engrave kind of in the lower right-hand corner of this cutting boards. More of a decorative type of application, but this is really popular. What we've done here is a little bit unique. It's called color mapping, where we assign different columns, different colors. We can have the laser optimize time by doing the red column and then moving to the green column and then to the blue column and then to the cyan column. If we were to have the lens assembly moving left and right through that white space, that is that space where there's no engraving, we lose a little bit of time. So this is a, a great way to optimize the cycle time through large jobs like this. So we've got the graphic set up. You can see we've got our text laid in place. We have some outlines here. These are hairline outlines that describe the size and shape of the cutting boards that we're gonna be working on. Oh, so now we just go to the print button, click on print. You see, we got a little visual of that there. And then this brings us into our software suite. You can see the camera's looking down onto the individual cutting boards. Uh, we need to move this artwork up. So we're gonna bring this up. What's nice about those vector lines is that we can use that as a guide for placement of that graphic. So now over here, you see we've got two processes. We've got an engraved process and a vector process. Of course, the engraving applies to all the text bodies and the vector process is specific to those grid lines that we set up. We don't need those grid lines on, so we can click on this and simply turn that process off. So now the laser will not vector those lines, it's just gonna be doing the engraving. To set this up to optimize for color mapping for cycle time increases, we can uh, click on this and then we are going to split this object or this graphic by color. You'll notice that our software suite identifies all those colors in there. On the left column, we have red. I wanna run that first. So I'm going to run this up here to the top. By putting red on top, that means that's the first job that's going to happen. So we're gonna double click on this. We're gonna run this at 100% power, about 75% speed. And that'll give us a nice deep engraving into that wood. And we're gonna keep this at resolution 500. Uh, we'll do top to bottom engraving there. And then we're gonna do the same thing with these other columns here. So we'll bring green up to be the next process that runs. Again, we'll set this to 100% power, 75% speed, and we'll have this going bottom to top as well. Our next color in line is blue, so we'll bring that up and set the laser parameters for that one as well. And our last one, cyan, we'll get this one set up power 100, speed 75, bottom to top engraving. And you can see we've got um, our processes all lined out here. Red first, green, blue, and then cyan. Gonna be going left to right through our space. At this point, we're ready to go. And then we simply hit the print button and the job is sent to the laser. Uh, here is uh, the photograph, the original photograph, and this is the image that we've processed through our photo software. You can see that it looks quite different. Uh, where we have black here, the laser's gonna pulse, and where it's white, the laser do does not pulse. It looks a little odd right now, but it really does look good uh, when it's engraved onto the suede leather. We have dithering patterns specific to each material for photograph engraving, a really powerful tool for those folks that are doing a lot of photograph engraving. So we're ready to go here. We click on print and then print again. And then the job gets uh, processed into our software suite. Here you can see our board. This is our suede board, 48 by 24 in size. There's our image. We're going to move this down and position it in place right on top of that board. 
I've actually made the graphic just a little bit larger, so the image is going to go to, going to go to edge to edge on the on the, the suede material. Everything's pretty much set up here. We're going to change some laser parameters though. Uh, we're going to run the power really low. We're going to go down to about 10% power, 100% speed. And then with photograph engraving, we tend to run things at about 300 DPI, which gives us a, a much better engraved image. So we're all set up. We've got our graphic placed. We've got our laser parameters all set up. And we just simply hit print and the job is sent to the laser. Our next project is going to be engraving and cutting on some architectural plastic. This is common plastic in the industry where we have two layers of different colors. We're removing the top layer of the color to expose the secondary layer. This is a great graphic that we've got built here. You'll notice that we just have standard black color and then we've got a red outline here. What's unique about our new software suite is our ability to change an outline like this to be an engraving. As we go through this, I'll explain this to you. Uh, our graphics ready to go. We're just going to hit the print button, go into our software suite. So I'll click on print here. And again, back into our live camera feed, you'll see the graphic there. There's the material that we're going to be working with. This is just a blue architectural plastic with a white substrate. Um, and so you see here, I'm going to zoom in on this real quick. We've got this red line here. It comes through as a vector line in our listing of processes. We can change that if we wanted to. If we decided not to cut that outline, we could change that to an engrave as well. And then that becomes an engraving line instead of a cut line. Uh, for this particular project though, we do want to vector cut that. So uh, I'm gonna change this back to vector. And now where the black image is going to engrave and then the red is going to cut. So let's go into the settings that we're gonna use for this particular job. I'm gonna set this up for the engraving portion first. Uh, we're going to run at 500 DPI resolution. We're going to get the speed up real high with this material. We don't need a lot of power relative to speed. And then I'm going to run the power down to about 25%. Uh, standard dithering would work well. Again, we're going to change that engraving direction from bottom to top. Uh, this is a really good technique, especially with this type of plastic. We find that the engraving surface remains cleaner. Uh, the result in engraving looks better when you go start at the bottom and work your way up. With vector, uh, that all looks good. We're going to maybe set these uh, speed and power settings a little bit lower uh, for power. Uh, and that looks good as well. And with that, we're ready to go. Uh, push on the print button and the job gets sent over to the laser. With our next project, we want to do some simple cutting of acrylic material. You can see in our graphic here, we have a cut line, the letter E, and then we've got the word elephant below that. We're going to send both jobs over to our software suite, and I want to show you how we can turn parts of this on and off. We don't want to do the engraving, just the cutting. We don't have to monitor or change the graphic. We can simply just go to print and then go to the software suite. We're going to line this up over the acrylic that we want to cut. You'll notice that we've got our slat table below there. This is going to do a really nice job of supporting that material during the cutting process. You'll also notice we've got our blue cut line here and also the yellow or red, the red engraving. We don't want to do the engraving. We just want to cut. So we go into the engrave process and then we select off. Uh, that will turn off that engraving and then we're just left with the vector cutting portion. Let's open this up and set up some laser parameters for that material. About 75 and 25 should work well. Uh, frequency, we like to set high for cutting acrylic. That produces a little bit better edge quality. And then uh, everything else looks good there. And we just click on print. And again, the job gets sent over to the laser.
If you'd like to learn more about the Epilogue Fusion Pro, Legend, or Zing series laser systems, give us a call or look us up online at epiloglaser.com.